Lecture 8. The theme of our lecture for today is the subjects of Shakespeare's historical chronicles, his sonnets. Objectives. By the end of the lecture, students should be able to acquaint with William Shakespeare's world-known historical chronicles, define the idea of his chronicles, identify what is a sonnet and main themes of Shakespeare's sonnets. During this lecture, we are going to discuss the following questions. Historical chronic, its definition, Shakespeare's histories and their common features, definition of a sonnet and its characteristics, the Shakespearean sonnets. During this lecture, we are going to discuss the following questions. Historical chronicle, its definition, Shakespeare's histories and their common features, Definition of a sonnet and its characteristics, the Shakespearean sonnets. Chronic, a usually continuous historical account of events arranged in order of time without analysis or interpretation. Examples of such accounts date from Greek and Roman times, but the best known chronics were written or complied in the Middle Ages or the Renaissance. These were composed in prose or verse and in addition to providing valuable information about the period they covered, they were used as sources by William Shakespeare and other playwrights. Chronics create a timeline of events which is implicitly important in both storytelling and historical writing. They are much more comprehensive than a simple timeline, as they provide details and information about events, rather than just the time and order in which they happened. Chronics help to record the histories of all aspects of human life, politics, religion, weather, law, fashion, language. Nearly any topic can be chronic. They are more, the way in which chronics report information is objective, orderly, and accurate, and therefore reliable. The use of the historical chronic in literature began during the Renaissance, owing to the emergence of the issue of man's relationship to time. The concept of time was replacing the classical concept of fate and the medieval concept of God. William Shakespeare tries to raise historical consciousness and indoctrinate the importance of order and degree in obedience to kingship in his history plays. He emphasizes the importance of divine rights of kingdom, passive obedience, and the maxim, the kings do no wrong, in this place. He warns both the audience and the rules against uh, the destructive effects of disobedience which leads to chaos and civil war in the society. Shakespeare pulled inspiration of his plays from a number of sources, but most of the English history plays are based on Raphael uh, Hollingshed's Chronicles. Uh, Shakespeare was known for boring heavily from earlier writers, and he was not alone in this. Hollinshed's works published in 1577 and 1587 were key references for Shakespeare and his contemporaries, including Christopher Marlowe. Just as Shakespeare's comedies have dark theme and tragic situations, while their tragedies have some higher comic moments, in Shakespeare's history, plays contain comedy, tragedy, and everything in between. All Shakespeare's plays are dramas written for the entertainment of the public and Shakespeare's intention in writing them was just that to entertain. The Shakespeare histories share a number of things in common. First, most are set in times of medieval English history. The Shakespeare histories dramatize the Hundred Years' War with France, giving us Richard II, Richard III, and King John, many of which feature the same characters at different ages. Second, in all his history, Shakespeare provides social commentary through his characters and plots. Really, the history plays say more about Shakespeare's own time than the medieval society in which they are set. 
For example, Shakespeare cast King Henry the Fifth as an every man hero to exploit the growing sense of patriotism in England. Yet his depiction of this character is not necessarily historically accurate. It wasn't Shakespeare, but Shakespearean scholars who categorized his plays into the areas of tragedy, comedy, and history. The plays normally referred to as Shakespeare history plays are 10 plays that cover English history from the 12th to the 16th century and uh, the 1399-1485 period in particular. Each historical play is named after and focused on the reigning monarch of the period. In chronological order of setting, Shakespeare's historical plays are King John, Richard II, Henry IV, Part I and II, Henry V, Henry VI, Part I, II and III, Richard III and Henry VIII. The plays dramatize five generations of medieval power struggles. For the most part, they depict the Hundred Years' War with France, from Henry V to John of Arc and the Wars of the Roses between York and Lanchester. Shakespeare was a keen reader of history and was always looking for the dramatic impact of historical characters and events as he read. Today, we tend to think of those historical figures in the way Shakespeare presented them. While his son, Prince Hall, spends time in the taverns, King Henry IV argues with his former ally Hatsper. Angry Hatsper gathers a rebellion, and Henry and Hall go to a battle to stop him. Henry's army wins the battle, while Hall redeems himself from his wild use and kills Hatsper. Henry IV's part two is about the burden of power, old age, and atonement for the past as King Henry dies and Prince Hall accepts the crown. The play begins in the aftermath of the battle in Shrewsbury. In despair at the death of his son, Hatsper, and Earl of Northumberland pledged to lend his support to a second rebellion. This uprising is led by Richard Scroop, who is the Archbishop of York. After an insult from the French Dauphin, King Henry V of England invades France to claim the throne he believes should be his. Henry stops an assassination plot, gives powerful speeches, and wins battles against the odds. In the end, he wins and marries the princess of France, linking the two nations. the VI part one. After Henry V's death and while Henry VI is young, nobles rule England and fight the French, including John of Arc. As Henry VI becomes king, the noble houses begin to divide uh, and take sides between York and Lanchester. Henry VI part second. Against the wishes of the nobles, King Henry marries Margaret, who plots against him with her lover. As tension between York and Leicester built, the Duke of York gathers supporters of his claim to the throne. York secretly leads a rebellion. His supporters proclaim him king and Henry is forced to flee. After York's claim to the throne, Henry changes the succession and makes York his heir, dissentering his own son. Henry's queen kills York and York's son Edward sizes the throne. Henry is imprisoned several times and eventually killed by King Edward's brother Richard. Richard III is a play about evil, violence, and murder. It charts the rise of Richard, Duke of Gloucester, a cold-blooded and dastardly William who slatters his family and even marries his victim's widow to become a king. Before William Shakespeare's day, the word sonnet could be applied to any short lyric poem. In Renaissance Italy and then in Elizabethan England, the sonnet became a fixed poetic form consisting of 14 lines. Different types of sonnets involved in the different languages of the poets, writing them with variations in rhyme, scheme, and metrical pattern. But all sonnets have a two-part semantic structure containing a problem and solution, 
questions and answer or propositions and the reinterpretation within the 14 lines. Sonnets share these characteristics. 14 lines. All sonnets have 14 lines which can be broken down into four sections called quatrains. A strict rhyme scheme. The rhyme scheme of a Shakespearean sonnet. A sonnet can be broken into four sections called quatrains. The first three quatrains contain four lines each and use an uh, alternating rhyme scheme. The final uh, quatrain consists of just two lines which both rhyme. Each quatrain should progress the poem as follows. The first quatrain they should establish the subject of the sonnet, number of lines uh, for rhyme scheme. The second quatrain, they should develop the sonnet theme, number of lines, four rhyme and scheme. Third uh, quatrain, uh, this should round off the sonnet theme. And the fourth one uh, should act as a conclusion of the sonnet. The most well-known and important sonnets in the English language were written by Shakespeare. These sonnets cover such themes as love, Julius Lee, the passage of time and death. The first 126 sonnets are addressed to a young man, while the last 28 are addressed to a woman. 154 sonnets Shakespeare wrote, a few stand out. The collection of 154 Shakespearean sonnets remains some of the most important poems even ever written in the English language. The list is broken down into three sections, the Fair Youth sonnets, Dark Lady sonnets and the so-called Greek sonnets. Indeed, the collection contains Sonnet 18, Shall I compare three to a summer's day described by many critics as the most romantic poem ever written. It's strange that considering their literary importance, they were never supposed to be published. For Shakespeare, the sonnet was a private form of expression, unlike his plays, which were written expressively for public consumption. Uh, there is evidence to suggest that Shakespeare never intended for his collection of 154 sonnets to be published. Also written in the 1519s, it wasn't until 1609 that the Shakespeare sonnets were published. Around this time in Shakespeare's biography, he was finishing his uh, theoretical career in London and moving back to uh, Stratford upon Avon to leave out his retirement. To make things uh, even more complicated, a different publisher released another uh, edition of the sonnets in 1640 in which he ed edited uh, the gender of the fair use uh, from he to she. A breakdown of Shakespeare's sonnets. Also each sonnet uh, in the 154 strong collection is a standalone poem they to interlink to form and uh, overreaching narrative. Uh, in effect this is a love story in which the poet posts uh, adoration upon a young man and later a woman becomes the object of the poet's desire. The first uh, segment of Shakespeare's sonnets has become known as the Fair Use Sonnets. Sonnets 1 to 126 are addressed to a young man known as the Fair Use. Exactly what the relationship is is unclear. Is it a loving friendship or something more? Is it the poet's love? Or it's a simply uh, an infatuation? You can read more about this relationship in our introduction to the Fair Use Sonnets. The Dark Lady is a woman described in Shakespeare's sonnets. Suddenly, between sonnets 127 and 152, a woman uh, enters the story and becomes uh, the poet's muse. She is described as a dark lady with unconventional beauty. This relationship is perhaps even more complex than their face use. Despite uh, his infatuation, the poet describes her as evil and like a bad angel. You can read more about this relationship in our introduction to the Dark Lady sonnets. The final two sonnets in the collection sonnets 153 and 154 are completely different. The lovers disappear and the poet muses on the Roman myth of Cupid. These sonnets act as a conclusion of summing up to the theme discussed throughout the sonnets. 
it's difficult to appreciate today how important Shakespeare's sonnets were. At the time of writing, the Petrarch sonnet form was extremely popular and predictable. Uh, they focus on um, an unabortionable love in a very conventional way, but Shakespeare's sonnets managed to stretch the strictly obeyed conventions of sonnet writing into new areas. For example, Shakespeare's uh, depiction of love is uh, far from cowardly. It's a complex, uh, earthy, and sometimes controversial. He plays with gender roles, love, and the evil are closely into wind, and he speaks openly about sex. Shakespeare therefore paved the way for modern romantic poetry. The songs remained relatively unpopular until Romanticism really kicked in during the 19th century. It was uh, then uh, that the Shakespeare sonnets were uh, uh, revisited and their literary importance secured. Conclusion a chronicle is a historical account of facts and events arranged in chronological order as in a timeline. Many of Shakespeare's plays have historical elements, but only certain plays are categorized as true Shakespeare histories. The Shakespearean histories are uh, biographies of English kings of the previous four centuries. Shakespeare's sonnets are poems that William Shakespeare wrote on a variety of themes. When discussing or referring to Shakespeare's sonnets, it's almost always a reference to the 154 sonnets that were first published altogether in a quarter in 1609. The main characters in the sonnets are poet, uh, fair youth, and dark lady. This is the end of our lecture. In this very slide, given the revision questions according to our lecture. Here given the glossary concerning our lecture. Here given the literature for further reading.